Hello, Tim from Fair Play Now on the 30th of June 2023. So it's pretty much halfway through the year, the halfway point, isn't it? Is it just me or is this year going by mighty quick? But I guess that's what it is. Now, a couple of things I've seen recently. Yesterday, I was talking about that absolute idiot Matt Hancock, UK Health Secretary, during the height of the nonsense, and how he's saying at this inquiry that when the next lurgy comes along, we should have even harsher, more stringent lockdowns and all of the rest of it. So, totally unrepentant, totally in denial that his policies were a complete failure and just basically a load of rubbish. And as one guy puts it, far from still being a serving UK MP in Parliament, he should be in prison. Uh, the guy I'm talking about, I can't remember his name offhand. Uh, you'll know him if you've been looking at videos such as mine for any length of time. He's a younger guy with a beard. Uh, he does comedy stuff as well as kind of just serious talks to camera like this and he came out with a video in the last day or two which really sums up the whole Hancock thing at, at this Covid inquiry really really well so I'll leave a link to his video in the description box uh, below here and, and in the comment section as well. Uh, if you haven't come across him before he, he's well worth subscribing to because he's yeah right on the money with uh, most things. So, having said that, um, and linked to that, is something I saw on the Telegram group this morning, one of them, about the Amish, you know, the Amish people in the USA who live in a sort of a parallel society to the rest of uh, the US population. And despite the fact that they never did anything as far as any of the lurgy restrictions are concerned, they didn't lock down, they didn't muzzle up, they didn't have things in arms, they didn't do any of it. And despite all of that, apparently their death rate due to the lurgy was uh, sort of 90 times lower than the rest of the US population, or to switch that around, uh, the, the death rates in the US population were 90, that's 90, not one nine, but nine zero times higher. So it just goes to prove that, you know, all of the policies, the Lurgy policies were a total failure uh, because they had that sort of control group in the Amish and it proves that we would have just been so much better off uh, had we not done any of it. Uh, you know, we've got sort of proof positive there with the Amish thing. So I thought that was very interesting. Now, a completely different bit of news is, I don't know if you've seen this thing about Nigel Farage uh, in the last day or two, uh, he's been making a couple of uh, videos about his what's been happening to him. Now, it, it doesn't matter what you think of Nigel Farage. I know a lot of people in the freedom movement don't trust him or don't like him. That, that's all irrelevant. It's what the story is it should be a concern to all of us. And essentially what's happened to him is obviously the powers that shouldn't be don't like him and they've shut down his bank account. He's had several bank accounts, both private and business ones, for many, many years with a particular bank and just out of the blue they shut down his accounts with no kind of explanation at all. So it's just like literally one day he got a phone call and then a letter saying sorry we're closing your your accounts and he's been to quite a few other banks to open accounts there and all of them have uh, sort of refused him 
So it just goes to show you if you if you sort of think the persecution doesn't exist, it does. And everybody, regardless of whether you like Nigel Farage or not, should be outraged at that because it means that if you do or say something that the government and the powers that shouldn't be uh, and the corporate world doesn't like or you take a certain stance that they don't like, uh, well, you can be shut down. So it's an attack on freedom. And it just goes to show you how dangerous a thing line we're treading, doesn't it? Because we've always taken it for granted, haven't we, that you can just go and get a bank account, that you can, and, and so many other things, that you can go and get, just go and get medical care, you, that you can just go out and get food, that you can just go out uh, and travel, get on a plane and travel anywhere in the world you want. Um, all of these freedoms that we just took for granted, well, how many of those have been taken away or been shown to be a lot more fragile than we thought? They're not robust at all, are they? Uh, you know, we saw that with the lockdowns. You couldn't sort of travel or go anywhere. Um, we saw that with all the mandates. You couldn't even have bodily sovereignty at one stage uh, and possibly again in the future if the likes of Hancock gets his way again. Um, and now it seems that you can't even take your bank account uh, for granted. And, um, and it just shows you how we need to start thinking about other systems. I know a lot of people are and a lot of things are happening, but it just goes to show you if you thought up to now that the whole cash, keeping cash thing was a load of nonsense. I know probably most people watching this yeah, knows how important that is, but if you've been a bit sceptical about that, it should really prove to you that keeping cash is how important that is. And if Nigel Farage you know, kind of had loads of cash uh, around and yeah, pretty much everybody he dealt with Sort of took cash or paid him in cash, he wouldn't have a problem, would he? I know, okay, it might be a bit difficult. You'd have to sort of send the cash around, uh, you know, someone he sort of deals with up in Scotland, uh, say, uh, and he's in London and they want to pay him in cash or he needs to pay them in cash. It might be a bit awkward, but I'm sure systems of some type or other would soon come about where kind of cash transfers like that could happen a lot more easily uh you know um maybe just sort of pop it in a packet put it on a secure carriage on a, a special train and then it, up it goes into scotland and you know uh, the person gets it the next day you can have some kind of well they, they probably exist already where you can sort of post cash around or, or whatever but sis, systems like that need to come about and if he was set up like that, he wouldn't have a problem with it, would he, by losing his bank accounts? But by sort of rushing into this digital future headlong, things like that have just showed how dangerous that is. You can just literally have your life, you know, let's face it, it's your life, isn't it? If you're heavily reliant on digital payments, have your sort of life shut down, uh, just like that overnight uh, yeah if we had a society where let's say 80 percent of the transactions happened with cash well yeah you couldn't be shut down could you so i, th I think that is a cautionary tale what's happened to farage a very big hopefully uh, it will hopefully be a very big wake-up call for many as well so i've heard some Big news from the States, although it's totally unconfirmed. I've only seen this report in one place, to be honest with you, on the Telegram groups. So I won't really talk about it or what it is, but if it is true, it should be, well, it should be all over the front pages of pretty much every newspaper and on all of the mainstream media. But because it's something that they wouldn't like because of their political leanings it's not anywhere now 
the reason why it's not anywhere might be because this is a false report um, or it's because yeah the mainstream media aren't doing their jobs but even if that aside even if this particular instance it's not news well how many times have we seen in the last few years where the mainstream media should have been reporting on something but haven't and it kind of leads me on to well as a sparky I think I should give uh, journalists, mainstream journalists at the very least, a bit of advice. So Sparky's advice to all mainstream media journalists, and it's simply this. If there's news to be reported on, you report it and you report it truthfully. You don't kind of not report on things that you should be reporting on because it doesn't suit you to not report on it and you don't report on other things just because it suits you to do it and you certainly don't kind of uh, report you know report accurately or inaccurately if the government's telling you to do so you ignore the government i don't care how much advertising revenue they've given you uh, i don't care how much they're bribing you or whatever's going on or how much pressure they're putting on you if you need to be reporting on something you report on it you report on it accurately and you report on it truthfully and if you're being leaned on by anyone you just say get lost you know government get lost sort of big business get lost i don't care how much you're giving us an advertising revenue get lost and you might be thinking, you might be the chief editor of, let's say, The Telegraph or The Times. But if anyone like that is watching this, you might be thinking, oh, well, if, I, if we report on the truth, we'll just lose all our revenue from this company and this company. Well, if you... That might happen, yeah, I don't deny that. But if you start getting the reputation of reporting the truth wherever it might be and however painful it might be, well, believe you me, that revenue that you're losing from those, let, you know, you know, you've got to admit, corrupt people and organisations, any money you're losing from them will be more than made up for by, well, people like me and other ordinary hard-working citizens who just want truthful journalism. We want to see everything that's going on reported and reported properly. And like I say, if you get the reputation of doing that, then you don't, you won't have to worry about money because we'll subscribe. Uh, yeah, all of us ordinary people will subscribe to you. And the first kind of mainstream media outlet who does that will clean up because all of the others will will be forced to follow suit but you'll be the first ones to do so and you'll have the best reputation and you'll have the most money coming in so it just needs someone to be a bit brave in the mainstream to do something like that and you know you'll get what you want enough revenue to keep going and we'll get what we want truthful accurate reporting from the established sources the mainstream sources so just a little thought for today um, you might want to think on it if you're anything to do or have any kind of contacts into mainstream media and on that one i'll leave it back tomorrow tim from fair play now thanks for watching